Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to day four of the trade period, or as we should probably call it, the no trade period. Uh, I'm Terry, this is Dan. Good evening to you, mate. What's going on? Hi, hi. How are we all doing? Are we all well? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all well. I think I think we've all been stitched up, we've all been sucked in, yet again. It happens to us every single year, and that's what happens when you finish towards the bottom, and you become so relevant um, when it comes to trade period, and that's really what Carlton are. <laughs> Oh, it, it's so! I love this time of year. I love finding out that people have friends who have friends, who know someone. I just love it. I I can't get enough. Like today, Carlton have been linked with like twenty superstars. Yeah, it's quality. <laughs> yeah. So uh, welcome to everyone watching. For those of you who are new, um, this has been this the purpose of of this daily recap. We do it in thirty minutes, seven p.m. every single day during the trade period. Um, we're going to, we, we sift through the news for you and bring you all the relevant stuff, uh, for Carlton. That's the idea of it because it can be a little hectic and it can be a bit of a, it can be a bit of a headache going through all the news. So the idea is to just sift it all, sift through all of it, wrap it up, uh, in 30 minutes every day. And then we can all get on with our evenings and, and enjoy the spoils of, um, of whatever's happening in our lives. Um, I do want to give a shout out to whoever did call up today and, 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 um, use Blue Abroad as a, as a reference point. So I'm, I'm not sure who it was, and if you're watching, uh, please reach out and say good day. But, um, yeah, I was just listening. He was on the background while I was doing some work, and um, the gentleman said that uh, he saw that Blue Abroad re were reporting that Eddie Betts was going to Adelaide for pick 48. So just if you are watching, when you see the link that I put as, as a link, that's the source. Um, I don't do rumors here. I learned very, very... Um, very quickly after the Liam Baker situation, not to, to dive into rumours. The rumour game is not for me. So this will only be about the news and the facts of the day. So we'll just clear that up. But it was good for the shout-out. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I thought it was quite funny because, like, obviously in the media circles, we're higher up now than John Ralph. Yep. Which which is pretty good, isn't it? I mean, we've only got Eddie Maguire to go, so... Before we get on, before we get on, Zoe's just tuned in. Good evening to you, Zoe. She says that this time of year sucks. There's too many trains in our house. That's all I wanted to say. Good job, lovelies. Even if it does give me a headache, thanks for the support, Zoe. Yeah, cheers, wife. <laughs> what right, a mate. stitch up! What an absolute stitch up! Complete stitch up! Complete stitch up! All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's get stuck right into it because there's a few things to get into. We're going to plow through them all. The first one is our boy Zach Fisher. Um, we, we spoke about him yesterday with the whole him being shopped around and we sort of debunked it in a sense. And then a report came through the, uh, this afternoon, about an hour ago, maybe 90 minutes ago, about uh, the Western Bulldogs making an inquiry about Zach Fisher and us, you know, just knocking it on its head. Dan, what did you get from this? And for you guys, did you did you buy into this? or do you, I, think, I think what it did for me was... It sort of gave me a bit of patriotism for Zach Fisher and it made me realise, actually, no, I don't want him to go. What about you? Well, I mean, firstly, every time we offer an opinion on a subject, Sam Edmund reports it the next day as fact. <laughs> so shout out to Sam if you're watching. I'm glad I'm doing your work for you. But it's exactly like I said yesterday. For me, if I was a rival list manager and I wanted someone from Carlton, you'd say Cripper's untouchable, you'd say Walsh is untouchable, you'd say that Fisher, though, you probably would say is the best that would probably be able to be pried away um, with the players that are there. So he's definitely, I'd say, a sought-after talent. I think he'll stay, though. And I've said it all along, I love Fisher, I want him at the club. So, like, for me, I think he's done the hard yards, 55 games in a heap of shit. Mm-hmm club which it has been where like i mean he must look at his draft class and think i could have gone somewhere else but credit to him he stayed he's done them two years apprenticeship with us he deserves to stay with us when we're successful real hard worker i love fisher yeah and he's one of those players that we just he's really just scratching at the surface of what he's capable of we don't really even know what he he still could become a an elite a-grade player like he's still so young 
Oh, you look at the back end of, what, 2018 when we were horrific. Like, before he got injured, he was easily our best player behind Cripper. Yep. He was a superstar. Yep. So you think, I think he struggled when Teague took over because we kind of stopped playing him in and around the ball. He kind of deployed him half forward flank. And it kind of, I think maybe it unsettled him a bit. But I reckon Fisher will be a very, very good player for Carlton Football Club. Yep, absolutely. So we'll just, uh, I guess we can debunk that. Fish is staying around. Uh, he won't be going to the doggies and uh, we're looking forward to seeing him play again for the Blues next year. So I don't know how we get into the doggies as well because well, their midfield yeah, is let's, stacked. There's that too. All I right. mean, like, does. Let's move on. Eddie Betts is on the agenda next up. Where is Eddie, mate? What's going on? Well, at the moment he's doing a book signing, he's just conned me out of 150 bucks because... Yeah. My, my eldest is going off the hook with Eddie coming to Carlton. So I bought him Eddie Betts' kids' books. So he's got them signed. Yep. So he's in Adelaide. I know he's doing a book tour at the moment. So, But then again, I've got a theory. I think the AFL rigged this. Yep. So I reckon I'm going to create a POM prediction. Last trade to go through tomorrow night to tide us into the weekend, Eddie Betts. Watch this space. I like it. Well, it wasn't until I spoke to you maybe 10 minutes before we went live that I realised there's a good reason why the Eddie Betts thing could be delayed. He's doing a book tour in Adelaide and it would make sense because if he's going to be in Melbourne, you'll probably want to make the announcement while he's in Melbourne, put a Carlton Polo on him and then go from there. So do you know when the book tour gets to yeah, Melbourne? He's in, he's, I believe he's in Norwood tomorrow. Okay. Um, doing a He's doing a reading with kids. Real nice thing. He's actually giving out the books and reading with preschoolers and stuff. So it's really cool. Yep. Um, but I reckon tomorrow afternoon, I reckon it'll get through to tide us over through the weekend. Yep. Well, we hope that's, we hope that's the case. Um, and uh, we hope we can, we can just get an actual deal across the line. So Eddie, we're, we're looking forward to the announcement on that. Next one I want to talk about is Paddy Ryder. This was a fascinating one. This, this, this came out of nowhere and it was sort of one of those... It was one of those rumours that came out, and it made sense because we were talking about Mark Pitney the other night, um, you know, the Brody Grundy one, which we'll touch on in a moment. It seems like there's some sort of resignation to the fact that we think Phillips will go, um, and it would make sense that we're having discussions with Ruckman around the league. And um, there was a tweet that came out from Ash Brown early today, um, as you can read it. Well, Dan, you can't see it on the screen, but uh, it says, Paddy Ryder to the Saints, a done deal, question mark, perhaps not. The Port Wantaway was reportedly spotted meeting with the Blues at Icon Park, and then our man Sam Edmund just came with this bang, this bad boy here, uh, telling people to forget Paddy Ryder seen at Carlton stuff. Never happened, never will happen. Management say he's back in Adelaide, still won St Kilda. So I think, I mean, it would. I mean, I, I wanted to start talking about Paddy Ryder because I think he would have a lot to offer for us next year. Um, but for those of you at home, if you didn't see these two tweets, if you didn't see the second one. There it is there. So Paddy Ryder w w was not at Carlton, or maybe he was in the vicinity. I was actually listening to um, Adam Cooney at the time, and he was saying that there is a training facility at Icon Park, which athletes tend to use from time to time anyway. It also is a good meeting point. They do a good latte there as well. Um, my girl Dude. Jade works behind there. She's a really good barista there. So shout out to you if you're watching, Jade. But... Um, yeah, I think we can just sort of knock that on its head. Did you did you buy into this, Dan? Not really, no. <laughs> no. Um, but, I mean, like, it, it's that rumour time of year, in it? And, I mean, it was nice that um, Sam Edmonds uh, kind of quickly dispelled it. Yep. I, I mean, I thought it was weird because genuinely when a player nominates a club and St Kilda did that big trade this morning with their pick six, acquiring more picks, it kind of alludes to the fact they're building a stockpile for something. So I thought it was a little bit... Weird, he's nominated Saints and then suddenly with us. But, I mean, for me, yeah, Paddy Ryder, I mean, I think he'd be a good get. But I, I can't see him wanting to be a reserve ruckman for Cruiser. Yep. I, I couldn't see that. And we won't play him forward because mm -hmm. we're stacked up top. So, I think it's just another case of Ashley Brown trying to become relevant. Yep. All right. So, we'll put that to bed and move on to the next one. Uh, Brad Crouch, want to bring that up, up as well just to get a bit of an update because he is a bit of a popular name. Um, or he has been this week, um, came out speaking about how he want, his manager said that, I mean, they're looking for seven figures for him. 
the, they also came out. They also came out and said that he's most likely going to be staying at Adelaide as it is anyway. It just seems like it's too far away for Carlton at this point. What do you think? I think seven figures today, absolute madness. He's having a laugh. I, I, I don't know what is going on with some of the teams. Essendon wanting two first rounders for Joe. I look like a ferret Danaher. You know, St Kilda being told they have to give two first round picks for Brad Hill and he's had one good half a year. Mm-hmm. And Brad Crouch, seven figures, complete banter from list managers this year. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think I think we can also we can also I, I feel like we can put the the Brad Crouch talk to bed now. I mean, I understand the need for that type of player, but I think correct me if I'm wrong. I think this will pretty much just uh, eliminate any more Brad Crouch talk to Carlton. Oh, if Carlton play that much for Brad Crouch, like shut the shop. Yep. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Close it. I'm done. Because I, we'll have to do a show like at midnight because of the expletives. That's way too much. Good footballer, but he ain't that good. Yep. Fair play to him and his manager trying to get what they can for him. I guess that's what you're supposed to do at this time of year. But um, thanks, but no thanks to Brad Crouch. The next one is, oh, it's a bit exciting. I know you're going to get into this one. <laughs> The next one is uh, it's Brody Grundy, uh, and the reason why he's come up today is because Matty Lloyd made an interesting quote. Now, Matty Lloyd is not gospel, and what he's you know he's he's obviously just as much of a commentator as, as as anyone else. But he made a very interesting quote this morning about Brody Grundy, which said the following, and I've got it up on the screen, Dan. I'll read it out to you. He said Carlton should get on the phone. And he was referring to to Brody Grundy's management, which is um, Robbie Dorazio. Is his manager. I believe he would consider playing at another Melbourne club in the future if he doesn't reach a deal with Collingwood. Now, if you're a conspiracy theorist, right, um, you you can start putting some pieces together. Um, you know that Matt Lloyd is related to Brad Lloyd, and you know is he putting some feelers out there for Brad to see what it, what happens? Um, I mean, but for the reality of if you want to try and make a case for Brody Grundy, you look at it like this. Cripps, Walsh, you know, they're probably going to be the best midfield duo in the league in the next few years. Why wouldn't you go put the best Ruckman um, with them? What do you think, if, if you were watching at home, what do you think about making a super play for Brody Grundy? And uh, Dan, what do you think? Oh, what do I think? Just just go out and fucking get him, will you? Brody Grundy, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, oh, if there's an element of truth in that, get it done. Get it. That guy is a superstar. I'm talking next level. There can't be a Carlton fan out there who wouldn't say yes to Brody Grundy. If there is, you're mad. Yep. Like, honestly, you've lost. Like, Grundy is like next level. He's a he's a midfielder. He's look at his hair. His hair alone. Sign he's intelligent. He's got he's got brains. He's more than an athlete. Ah, oh, Grundy, Walsh, Colonel, Satterfield, Murphy, on the ball with that guy. Yeah. Just give us the flag now. Yeah. It's, it's probably one of those quotes that makes us dream. I mean, I, 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 I would be stunned if this actually came to fruition. Um, but it is one of those rumours that comes out and it makes you think, and that's really what this time of the year is about. It's trying to get together something and then it allows you to have a bit of a fantasy I think it would cost a lot, though, because I do know as a fact yep. that Collingwood rated Kerner yeah. as the best forward of that group. Charlie? At the time, yeah. And they worked hard to get him. Okay. They worked hard to get the pick to get him. So, to me, I would say, and I know Eddie always raves about Charlie, I reckon it would probably cost Charlie Dow in a future first, though. I reckon it's going to come... At an expense, a big yep. expense, but there would be an argument to be had that the forward line probably operates better with two tolls. I mean, losing Charlie would be a heartbreaker. It would cost a lot, but Jesus, you'd, you'd do it every day and twice on Sunday. Mate, I reckon one of those forwards, one of the three forwards that we have, one of the three, def- one of the defenders that we have too many of. And maybe a pick, or maybe yeah, you probably two players and a pick. Get it done for Brody Grundy. I just don't think it's worth doing. I don't know. 
I don't know. Well, I think you've you've got to think if we are after another big fish, like there's been phrases like elite midfielder thrown around. There hasn't been uh, an elite midfielder in the history of AFL go for less than two first round picks. Yeah. So when you're talking elite players, it would have to be good players. So I know Carlton fans are going to be like, Charlie Kerner doesn't play for anyone else. Can't go. Facts are facts. Take your heart out of it. Use the little grey thing in between your ears, your brain. You'd have to get rid of elite talent. We can't throw players like Paulson and Levi, players that have zero value. You're talking about Grundy, Clayton Oliver, elite players. You want elite players back. Like imagine if Carlton sold Cripps for Duggan and Chris Mastons. You'd flip. Yeah. So it works the other way. So that's why I don't think it would happen because mm-hmm. we'd have to give up some core players. But if it did, how good would it be? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 mean, I don't know if I'd want to get rid of Charlie though. I mean, but I, 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 I don't want to get rid of Charlie. He's yeah. one of my favourites. But yeah. I, I'd say so. So just remember for all our viewers, because sometimes when I offer an opinion, you think yeah. I'm going to trade them. That's what, if I was Collingwood, I would be asking for Charlie Kerner, Paddy Dow, and a future first. Yep. Minimum. That's what. That's the price. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's unrealistic to, to see Collingwood doing business with Carlton in that sense. Just, I know that, you know, the rivalry is a little bit old school and, and whatnot, but I don't know. You don't see it happening too much with, with big name players in, in other leagues. And I don't know, maybe that's not a good, maybe that's not a good comparison, but it just, just, it, it'd be so far-fetched right now. Oh, it's it's far, it's it's far fetched. It's far fetched. But you are talking. Grundy is not a normal player. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like literally, you've got to. But like for me, that's that, that's the mentality that we, they would be asking for core players. Yeah. So, and would I want Charlie to go? Absolutely not. But that's who I'd be asking for. Like if I was their list manager, I'd want him ASAP. I'd want Kerno and Dow. All right. Well, that's that's the Brody Grundy conversation. It's going to be a very interesting one if it does eventuate, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. But we'll see what happens. So that's that. The next one on the agenda, probably the, the last one, is is Papley, Tom Papley. So the only real news on the Papley is just a, a little a little quote that Damian Barrett made this morning, and I'll read it out now. So he said, Carlton will give up pick nine for Tom Papley. The Swans will end up with pick five and nine, and the Swans should ask both for both of them for Danaher. This is the Swans' problem to work out. So the reason why I really was drawn to this was because it seems like the talk is just so normalised to the and resigned to the fact that we're going to give up pick nine for Papley and therefore going to get to Papley, that this conversation was actually talking about Sydney and Essendon and Joe Danaher. So a little bit more of a layer to the confirmation um, about Tom Papley, which I guess is, is exciting, but nothing is really as exciting as what it's going to be compared to when we actually get the, the news that he's signed. So just another layer to it, Dan. Just get it done already. But I mean, like, yeah, like for me, I think pick nine is going to get the job done. I reckon he is ours. I think he's another one that, He's going to drag out a little bit, but I, I would imagine Carlton have effectively got that sewn up already. Yeah. I think that's pretty much done. Like, if you hear the talk now, it's all about all about um, Danaher mm-hmm. coming from Sydney. So I'd imagine they've sorted it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't know. when When can we expect a deal to get done? I mean... I don't know. Like it's, we're at the mercy of, of, of the list managers here. Uh, all the posts were made yesterday on on Herald Sun, and obviously we made a post on uh, on Blue Broad about Eddie coming home. And you think hopefully tomorrow something gets announced just for us to go into the weekend with something to think about, right? Yeah, well, that's why I think I think like for me Friday will probably be the best deal. I reckon you'll probably see very early doors next week. We'll get the Papley deal done because then it gives the AFL four days to, you know, massage the excitement for the final day of Danaher leaving yep. with 25 minutes to go. Yep. 100%. You know what I mean? We've got to remember that's what happens. No, it's true. All right, let's open it up. We've got about 10 minutes to go. We'll open it up to you guys. If you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, anything you want to raise, this is the time to put your questions in now. I did have a question here. 
from someone. I forgot who it was, but it was about Levi Castbolt. Oh, before we do that, let me give some clarity on the debate. So we're going to have a debate tonight about Eddie Betts coming to Carlton. Should we do it? Should we not do it? Obviously, the news came out that he'd be coming anyway. So we scrapped that. We put a poll out today. Um, and the topics that were most popular last night that you guys raised that are going to be in contention for the debate were one of the topics was Levi Caspol, should we trade him or should we keep him? And the second topic was, should we go and get a big, big name player now or should we wait for next year's free agency? So we've got a couple of hours until that poll ends, but right now it's uh, it's on the it's uh, on the side of Levi. It's 52% in favor of the Levi topic. So Dan and Riley will have the debate. It'll be on Tuesday night. So please stay tuned for that. And just please read the read the post a little bit more clearly. It's two topics that we'd like you to vote on. Um, and we'll have a debate uh, next week. But I guess we can talk a little bit about Levi Casbolt. Um, tell me a bit about, is the deadline passed for free agents to leave or unrestricted free agents to leave? Yeah, so that finished at five o'clock today. But we've okay. got to remember that Levi is not technically a free agent in the terms of there is an extension in front of him. Yep. So I believe they have until Wednesday to match or if, if anything's come of that. But, I mean, we've got to remember the situation at the moment is he does have a contract in place. Yep. So the I reckon the only way Levi would go is if if right now he's refused he's refused that extension. But I believe the extension was just a complete was just an automatic rolling extension. So yep. he wants an additional year. He wants to. So it's already passed. So for me, it would just be now a simple trade, simple effect of a trade. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I want to leave a Levi topic in terms of, you know, for or against uh, until Tuesday, but that's an interesting one there. Um, he did have a good, strong finish to the season, and uh, there are obviously... He had a great year. Great, great year. I mean, year. there's no getting yeah. away from it. Absolutely phenomenal performance. I mean, re- his age to redevelop a position, dominated, did really well. Yep. Hats off to him. Brilliant Absolutely. player. I mean, I will add one thing about the debate, just so the rock watchers know... Whatever me and Riley discuss aren't necessarily our opinions. Mm. Uh, we've both chosen a subject where we, we probably aren't very strong on in feeling. So it's going to be we're making a case for it. So yep. don't, I, I'm used to this gig now. I don't want anyone PMing Riley abuse if he, uh, if he says Levi needs trading. It's not fair. It's just literally we're doing it for entertainment value. So Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's get uh, let's get a few questions in. Matt Gandolfo, good evening to you, mate. Do you think there'll be any sneaky late trades like Lumen, Newman was last year? I think it's inevitable that there will be, right? Oh, it's yeah, a- there'll be. I, I, I still got a sneaky feeling. This isn't Carlton related. I just really think there is a big fish that hasn't been discussed. A big trade is going to happen. I, we haven't really had any left field shocks yet yep so i reckon there is one due around the corner just a left field shock Mm -hmm. and i'm looking forward to it because i love it yep absolutely bryce is asking any news on the potential trade period after the jlt matches and how would that even work if it's after the draft i don't know a lot about the idea but was flown to the coaches yeah yeah they're, they're voting on it are they having an extended draft during the year um so for me i reckon I mean, I think there's an argument for it, but I do think the way that when you're talking trades, I think it's very confusing when you could trade picks during the year Mm -hmm. because a lot can change during the year. Like, I'd like to see maybe a loan system based on injuries. So, you know, like the American football, they have the emergency list where if they get a long-term injury, they can pull someone out of of one of their affiliate sides or free agents throughout the year. I'd like to see that in there. I, I'm not too sure about a draft a trade that goes throughout the year, though. I'm not a big fan of it. Yep. Riley's got a question for you. What is there more of, stars in the sky or players linked to Carlton on big footy? Well, they say that if you take a grain of sand and you counted every grain of sand in a handful, that that's pretty. there's, there's more galaxies than that. So you think how many there is. There's a hell of a lot of trades. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of trade rumors there. Like... The amount of times I've heard people say this week, just alone, just today, I've got a friend who works with or knows someone 
must be a lot of people who work at these football clubs. Crazy. Ryan Matthew, good evening to you, mate. Any more news about some of the players looking to leave their clubs? Tommy Cutler, Dan Butler, James Rosen, players like this. Um, there was another, there was one that skipped my mind. Scharenberg, I think it was. I think he's looking to go elsewhere. Don't know if he's an option for us. Hasn't really been touted as one for us. But yeah, I'm still pretty pretty keen on us at least having the the, the conversation with um, with Tom Cutler from Brisbane. I like some of the things that I saw Big from Tommy. him. I was watching some Get of his in. highlights. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't heard anything else. There's nothing really else that was floated out today. So yeah, nothing else. That Drew Bakes. Good evening to you, mate. He's pretty keen on Aiden Bonner. Yeah, um, another one. He's another one that's sort of in the mix. No news like has come him. out. Big strong. Yeah, we spoke about him on Monday, I think it was. So, yeah, maybe check. That I, I am hearing from my uncle-in-law. He is a lifelong Cal- um, St Kilda fan, like my wife. Yep. Um, he is adamant Butler's going to St Kilda. He is. He's locked that in mentally. So he never gets excited about trades, but he's super excited about this one. So. I think Butler's not coming. Okay. Grant Harvard, hope we get Gaff. What do you think? Grant, you're probably a day late. Gaff's not coming. He actually, there was a, a story today about how he called the club and um, he was really um, shocked to hear the news and he wanted to confirm that he wouldn't be leaving as part of the Cali deal. So, no, Gaff's not coming um, unless there's some other, you know, freaky deal in place that we don't know of, but it's highly unlikely. It was actually pretty much quashed today as well from West Coast, so that's that one there. Um, Riley said it's another trade period between the 10 days of the last JLT game and Thursday of round one. Okay, so that's a response. Um, Tracy says that Sauce must have a special lemon tree that grows picks. It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good point. Um, Peter Vlahos, does Martin go to the Blues best 22 round one, 2020? Or play VFL in first few weeks to prove himself just like JSOS did. P.S. As he's lost a lot of form in lastly three years and may take a bit more than a preseason to get him ready. Uh, good question. Does Jack Martin play round one? I think he does. Yeah, I, th- I think when you're paying what well, Gold Coast one, and I suspect that even if we don't pay a first rounder, it will be close to. Yep. I think when you play that type of money for a player his age, I think he starts 22. He has to, for me. Mm-hmm. I like it. Kano's asking, would Matty Broadbent be a good get? Matty uh-huh. Broadbent, the 33-year-old port D-listy. Yeah, I mean, I think he's not dissimilar to Daisy. So, I mean, probably probably not. <sighs> I, I, I think we're walking a dangerous line. If we're delisting Daisy, who had a phenomenal back end of the year, um, I think, for me, it's a bit of a risk if we start picking up Billy No Mates mm-hmm. from Port. Yep. Port are a rabble themselves. So, not not for me, no. I think we've got a lot of players who play in his position, for me. Yep. We've also got to remember we've signed Goddard recently. So... Obviously, I know Soss raves about Goddard, big fan of him. I'm a big fan of Hugh Goddard, so I think the back line's set. Yep. But, yeah, it's a no for me, Matthew Broadbent. Nah, like, what, yep. what next? Bring Fev out. 100%. Clinton Bart McRae says he keeps hearing that on Monday. An A-grade Victorian-based midfielder will announce he's coming to Carlton. Yeah, I saw this yesterday on the... The Carlton Live post um, could be in the works. We'll see what happens there. It'd be, it'd be interesting. It'll get us all up and about and excited, that's for sure. Um, oh, can I see it? I mean, like, for me, I'm just going to throw this hypothetical out. So I'm not dispelling the Carlton Live rumour. Could be true. If you sco- sign a non-disclosure agreement, I'd assume you sign a non-disclosure agreement, not because it's bullshit. Um, but like for me, let's just say, while well, put a hypothetical out to the audience, they're very intelligent and informed. Just say pick nine and we get 25 back. Let's just say that happens for Sydney and we give 25 for Martin. So that's all sewn up. How are we going to get an elite midfielder? They all go for two first. I saw someone in the comments. Uh, my comments are 10 seconds behind, so it doesn't lag. But someone saying Mitchell went for a first rounder. Got to remember, Mitchell wasn't elite at that time. It was his first good year. A lot of question marks from Sydney themselves about him. And the press thought it was overs when they paid a first round. A lot of them slated it. 
And a lot of you guys in the Carlton forums were slating us playing a first rounder for Mitchell. So let's just say they go. How are we going to get an elite midfielder with a future first? It's not going to happen because we're anticipated by even the worst pundits have Cow and 14th next year mm -hmm. in a draft that's not highly touted. It's meant to be the worst of a decade. So it's not going to carry any value. We're going to have to give up players. So then we're going to have to have this conversation about, you know, who would go to subsidise that. It's going to be a good player. It's you, you can't, unfortunately, we have to sometimes understand as Carlton fans, we have to sometimes give good players. So they're not going to go for Paulson or our backup players. They're going to want first team 22. So unless the player desperately wants that and it's like a danger field situation where they come to a compromise, I just can't see it. Yeah. I just can't see it. I, I, I'd say... For me, I can't see it being an elite player. It's probably going to be someone like Viney, someone who's good, but not wow. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, mate. That's 30 minutes. Uh, they go so quickly now. Um, but that's okay. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with some actual trade news. Thank you very much for tuning in. This will be available on YouTube in about 35, 40 minutes for those of you who missed it. Or you can just watch it again on Facebook. Thanks for your support, guys. Have a great night and go the mighty Blue Boys. Go the Blues.